issues and then I'm going to ask the ladies to come and uh, just lay hands on those that would pray for Regina and if you uh, don't want to come up front you just pray where you're at and that will be fine. Uh, you can go back to your seat. given us, Lord. Watch over us as we go through this service, Lord. Just let it open our hearts and minds and issues that's going on in her life. Lord, we know you're in a great position. We know anything that we ask of you, you will take care of in your own way, Lord. We just have to accept what goes on in our lives and what goes on. So Johnny's been talking, and y'all all know her. She's been coming for a while now, and she uh, came and so we are so glad that she has decided to become part of us. And uh, today is that day. And I'm going to have to have you take a seat right now. And y'all help me remember at the end of the service, we will get her back up so y'all can We'll be taking communion in just a few minutes. God bless you. Uh, Lynn, let's continue this one.
You have your Bible this morning, you'll turn to Hebrews chapter 10, New Testament, book of Hebrews chapter 10. morning as we prepare for communion, I would just like to take a few minutes and speak on sacrifice. The book of Hebrews has a lot to say about sacrifice. The Bible as a whole has a lot to say about sacrifice. But all the things that happened in the Old Testament, uh, from the animal that I believe died so that Adam and Eve could be clothed, up until uh, uh, Jesus Christ came, all of those sacrifices pointed toward what Jesus was going to do on the cross. 
And so here, especially in Hebrews chapter 10, it tells us these things. And so we'll take a look at the first 23 verses. It says, beginning in verse 1, For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshipers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he was perfected or has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. And then he adds their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. Father, we're grateful again for this day. We thank you so much for this time that we have here together today. Lord, I pray today that you would touch us in this place. I pray, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts today to receive your communion in a few moments. Lord, I pray that if we have any unconfessed sin in this place today, Father, that we would confess it before you. That you would help us, Lord God, that you would help us recognize that we are here only because of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved only because of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are taking communion today only because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for that, we say thank you. God, help us in this place today. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And so again, the Bible tells us, and you've heard me say many times, but if you have not done it yet, I would encourage you to mark or underline in your Bible these words in the first verse of this scripture. Again, it says, for the law can never make perfect. The law can never make perfect. The intention of the law was never to make perfect. The intention of the law was to show mankind that there was no way they could keep the law of God and that there would need to be something that was done in order uh, or someone that would come along that could keep the law of God and keep it perfectly. And so again, all of these 
things were to do what? To help people fall down on their face before Almighty God and say, God, there is no way that we can do this thing. God, is it impossible for us to keep the law? God, it's impossible for us to be able to do all these things that you would have us to do and do these things perfectly. Lord, that you would make a way for us so that we would be worthy in your sight. Amen. And God said before the beginning of time, I have made a way, and his name is Jesus Christ, who was coming, who kept the law perfectly, who was that lamb slain before the foundation of the world, who was that one that is the sacrifice for the sin of the whole world, if only that would just accept that gift and come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Bible here goes on and says that with the sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament, the sacrifices that were made until Jesus died on the cross, until the curtain over the Holy of Holies was torn in two, until that time, there was a reminder every year that sin was in man's life. And what was that reminder? Because every year they had to take a lamb, and every year they had to come bring that lamb, and every year the father of the family would lay his hand on the head of that lamb and thereby lay all the sins for his family on that lamb's head and then that lamb would be sacrificed and then the high priest would go into the holy of holies once a year and sacrifice all for blood sprinkled on the mercy seat for all the sins of Israel Amen. but then the next year he would have to do it again that father would have to do it again. The high priest would have to do it again. And the year after that, they would have to do it again. And the year after that, they would have to do it again. And so several uh, thousand years, every year, they had to offer that sacrifice. But then one day, one came that offered one sacrifice for one time. Why? Because that blood of those bulls and those goats that was offered could never take away sin. Have you ever tried to paint something? <laughs> well, we can take in the fellowship hall. When the first coat of primer went on, and it went on pretty good, but you can still see some imperfections. As a matter of fact, it pointed out some imperfections that needed to be worked on a little bit, that needed to be corrected. I have painted things before, and you can still see everything behind it. You couldn't tell that I put anything on there until I added more coats. And you see, it was the same way with the blood of the bulls and goats. Every year, they would cover or try to cover their sin with that blood, but it never truly did away with them because even though that blood of that animal, that innocent animal was shed, those imperfections always shine through. That's right. They were always there. They could always be seen because the sin never went away. Oh, it was covered for a time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but the imperfections were still there. And so the Bible says there's no way those things could take away sin. The Bible says in verse 5, when he came into the world, that is Jesus. He said, listen, Lord, God, I know that uh, your desire was not, your pleasure was not in these sacrifices for sin. What was the point? Again, to point to one that was to come. Right, right. Whose blood could actually do something with the sin. Not just cover it up, not make it a different shade of red, but actually do away with it. Right. Make it go away, never to be seen again. Right. And so God prepared a sacrifice. He offered up one that could come and do that very thing. Again, Jesus himself said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He is the only one that can truly say that and mean it. Oh, so often we can say, Father, I'm going to do your will, but oftentimes we end up not doing God's will, mm -hmm. but we do our will and hope God will jump on board with our will. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Jesus said, I came to do your will, Father. 
I came to live the life that you want me to live. I came to offer that sacrifice. Again, verse 10 says that the offering of the body of Jesus Christ was once for all. One time. Jesus doesn't have to go to the Holy of Holies every year and sprinkle more blood. That's right. The blood that he sprinkled was enough. That's right. It was more than enough. Not only did it cover the sin, but it washed it away, as Isaiah 118 tells us, so your sin be as scarlet, it shall be white as snow. That's right. Right. I've never seen anything red that can dye something that causes it to come out white. But the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. washes our sin, which is pitch black and filthy, whiter than snow. No, we need to be thankful for that fact and rejoice in that fact each and every day. Again, the Bible tells us that those Old Testament sacrifices could never take away those sins. But not only did Jesus' sacrifice take away the sin forever, but then it says he was finished because in verse 12 it says he sat down at the right hand of God. You see, the high priest had to go every year and every day. The high priest and the priest that worked in the temple, they never did get to sit down and take a break. They never could take a load off and wipe their forehead and go, whoo, man, I need to take a break for a few minutes. No, they were always on their feet. They were always offering sacrifices or putting oil in the candles so they'd stay with it because they could never go out. Always replacing the old bread with the new bread. There was always something that needed to be done in the temple of Almighty God. But when Jesus came and when Jesus died on the cross for our sin and he ascended into heaven and he sat at the right hand of the Father and sitting in the case, it is done. There is no more work that I need to do. Amen. It has all been completed. Again, Jesus gave us a hint of that on the cross when he said, it is finished. Everything that needed to be done for your sin and mine mm. was finished. And so Jesus has sat at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says, waiting until that time that his enemies are made his footstool. We know that he will not remain seated, but one day he will come again. The book of Revelation tells us that he will come on a white horse and the armies Amen. of heaven will be behind him. And he comes with a sharp sword that will go out of his mouth and will smite the nations. And the Bible says there is a name written on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. And he will rule and reign forever and forever. <laughs> Again, the Bible gives us this promise. The Bible tells us that one day, through the blood of Jesus Christ, oh, we've been perfected. We've been saved. We've been sanctified. But we await glorification. Mm. But that day will come. That's right. And the Bible tells us that God's laws will be in our hearts and in our minds. The Bible says that our lawless deeds mm. will be remembered no more. You see, the thought just came to me that when death and hell are tossed into the lake of fire, I believe that the memory of our lawless deeds will be cast into the lake That's of right. fire with them. Because, see, Lawless deeds and sin bring death. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that death will be cast into the lake of fire. Right. <clears throat> Never to affect the world again. Mm. Never to affect us again. So we look forward to that day. The Bible also tells us in verse 19 that we have boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Again, only the high priest can go in and only once a year, but the Bible tells us we can go into the Holy of Holies at any time. Right. 
Right. We can come before our God at any time. Why? Not because of the blood of bulls or goats, but because of the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gives us the authority to go in. Gives us the authority to enter in. And we don't have to enter in in fear and trembling as the high priest did, wondering he was going to get something wrong. Mm. But we enter in as a child going in to see his father. Amen. And can jump up in his lap and say, Daddy, mm. I sure am glad to be in here with you today. Because of this, verse 22 says we can draw near with a true heart in what? Full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. We can draw near. Again, our hearts have been sprinkled. Our bodies have been washed with pure water. Now here's the part that we need to get a hold of. If most of you are like me, you may have struggled at some point with this last verse in 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. You see, my faith wavers, but Jesus' faith Amen. never wavers. Right. Oh, my hold gets weak, but Jesus' hold never gets weak. Right. There are times when I wonder, God, is it true? And Jesus says, I have made the promise. It doesn't matter what your promise is. It's my promise. Hmm, that's right. Jesus himself said, no one can take you out of the Father's hand. Right. When we begin to waver in our faith, we need to remember this promise. Mm. And remember, yes, my faith may waver, but Jesus' faith never wavers. Amen. <clears throat> it is always strong. His promises are true. He has promised that he will never leave us and forsake us, and he has kept that promise, and he will keep it for all eternity. Amen. And we can rejoice in that. You see, we come to the point of celebrating communion to remember the promise that he made to us. He sealed that promise with his own blood. And then he gave us the extra guarantee of sealing us until the day of redemption right. with the Holy Spirit of God. Sealed. Showing ownership. Right. All because what it is that the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. This time, let's just close our eyes for a moment. Let us have a time of prayer. However the Lord leads you to pray at this time, I would just invite you.
continue to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed if you'll listen to the word of God. When the hour had come, Jesus sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Brother Mitchell, will you lead us in prayer? Father God, we come to you this morning. Lord, we just thank you for the words that were spoken here this morning. Father, as we go into the time, Father, of the breaking of the bread this morning, Father, I pray that we have all come to you, Father, that we have evaluated the things that may be wrong in our life, Father, and we've asked for forgiveness this morning. Lord, as we come to this time, let us think about the price that was paid so we can freely worship you and that we can have to enjoy the freedom from the sin that we have through the blood that we shed. Yeah. Father, let us think of the body that was broken, that was beaten. Father, you tell us in your word that it was beaten beyond recognition for the pain and the suffering that he went through. The blood that your son shed so we could enjoy this freedom, Father, each and every day. Lord, again, let us take this time to just clear our minds and everything with us, Father, and just, just look to that upon you. Father, and I come to you this morning as the daddy that you are, Father. We have some families here this morning, Father God, that have lost out of love. And Lord, I come to you this morning just asking that you'll touch them. Lord, that you'll give them that peace and understanding and that comfort that can only come from that of you, Father. And it's part of the blood that was shed this morning. Lord, my sister this morning is having health issues. Father, I pray this morning that she's been washed in the blood. Lord, that you'll touch that body this morning. But Lord, let us not take away from, you, from what we're here for this morning. That's to give glory and honor to you. And all that we do. And we lift this prayer up in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Ask you to take your bread at this time. When you remove it, if you just hold it up. Don't look at me, but look at that bread. And just take a moment and think about what it represents. Jesus said it represents his body, which was broken for us. Think about that for just a minute. Jesus' body was broken for us. And Jesus said, take and eat the bread. Again, I invite you to take that cup after you've opened it and just look at it for just a moment. And think about Jesus' blood being shed for us. This represents, helps us to remember the blood that Jesus shed, that unlike the blood of those animals, takes away our sin forever to be remembered no more. Jesus had them divide the wine up and he said take and drink.
Father God, we just come to you today again grateful for this day and for this time, Father. Thank you again for our Lord Jesus Christ, for all that he did for us. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for him, Father, mm -hmm. what a desperate <laughs> place we would be in. <laughs> Lord, strengthen us each and every day with that knowledge. Help us to live day by day with the knowledge that we're saved through blood that was offered once and for all, never having to be offered again. And we thank you for that. Again, Lord, I ask that you would go with us into this world. It's so dark. And there's so much wickedness. But Lord, we are to be the light of the world. And Lord, we have the answer, and his name is Jesus Christ. Help us share that with others. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask Johnny if she'll come up front at this time. And my wife.